to get off to a decent start as an offlaner. He has the problem of like levels one and two, he's really weak. You'll see some tempers pick up level two reactive armor at level three, but sometimes it does not even get the to that point. Begins. And he's not particularly good with the iron talent. So Nako got it. He stole the rune. They're going to go for the sentry. Straight at the stun. He's got to walk back in range of the sentry to get around the shards. But Taneko will get away. He is a bounty hunter by day and a thief by night. That especially hurts because you get a double regen against Dendi's uh, level 2 shadow strike. And we've almost had like our, our permanent small cam on, on just Snaeko and Korra battling inside the jungle. Oh, he's getting rolled on on top. Yeah, Tusker goes for Snaeko. Jirax brings Dutz along with him. Snaeko will try the run, but again, the Penguin slides out, putting up the shards. And Snaeko, no real way to survive this unless he can last for about two more seconds. He goes invis, but now we fast blood going the way of Koro. He had about one and a half seconds left until that dust was going to dispel. A little bit left unchecked inside the jungle. It is, but it makes up for the two sentry wards early, and they don't have any observer wards in the. Oh, Snaeko! He just walked under the tower and went for the courier, but not only just the courier, it's the contents of the courier. Snaeko and Denny will back out of this one, but it's the bottle of fada that has just been lost. Major thing the Timber Souls are susceptible to is that big burst damage combo, and that's something which a Queen of Paint offers in droves. But my control can just get a TP to, to deal with that. If he Middle lane, Fata initiated on. Seneca was waiting just for the right time to strike, and they kill him off. General came in just to say hello, but he really wasn't even required at the end of the day. Difficult to get that level 6 over on Koro, yeah, yeah. just because Snaeko has been such a disruptive force. But then Snaeko is now tanking up the bottom lane, also finding a little bit of farm of his own. They're trying to get his level 6 middle lane, Fada initiation comes in, but with double spirit stipend so quick onto Denny and Asta, Snowball's coming forward, is headed over towards Denny, but they don't go up the hill with the Snowball, they're caught on the ground, and now with the Shroud, Fada the Sonic Waves committed and say goodbye to your Death Prophet again! Two kills coming the way of Na'Vi! And both of them have been over Radiant on Fada, and this is the power of the Na'Vi lineup. Now they can push into the T1 tower, with the power of the Liquid lineup, the counter push comes in from Mind Control. Line drawn towards the Yara into the Radiant jungle, and it's a schmuck. And I think Mind Control is going to be a very, Radiant's very large issue soon. Well, Didi Ra walks straight into it. He doesn't have ulti form that should trigger the dust. I think your bounty hunter's there, but he was just around the corner of the of the cliff. Didi Ra, the raw will be committed. Support's going to come in, or will it? It's actually not coming in fast enough. Didi Ra puts the walls up. He's tanking up so long. And Seneko, they'll track over on Jirax. He snowballs. He's going in deeper. He's going up the Lycan, but you've already lost your Death Prophet. They just keep battling, and now it's Liquid. They find themselves in a little bit too deep inside the Radiant base, inside Did the Radiant jungle. Didn't they talk they... Oh, it just would have been on the edge getting a glimpse of Matumbaman. But it's the middle lane, where potentially... Nope. Denny Ra gets uh, shotted up, but there's no real follow-up. Snake goes just shuriken tossing and being a very big nuisance with that three-point up. So you take the stack, but you lose your tier one tower on top lane. A lot of damage coming out on bottom. Yeah, right behind that tower. There's the stun coming in from the VS. They need a little bit more follow-up with the swap. They might be able to get it. Timber Chain will drag Mind Control away. He's got 15 reactive armor stacked up at the moment. The Sonic Wave, it manages to reach out to Koro. And now did you right? He wants to battle up against Mind Control. But do they have enough damage? The 31 regeneration second. A short-range Timber Store. And maybe with the shots coming in, did you right? Still going to go for more. He'll avoid the Timber Chain off to the left. Seneca still on the back line. Jirax, he's got a lot of life to work with. The Crypt Swarm is a little bit off target. It doesn't need to you right. He'll TP out in the trees. The Courier's also going to go down to General. This is just Fada locked inside this crowd. He'll turn for the silence because he's got the support. This Ven has come into the fight. And Na'Vi do not want to bar of this. They've actually smoked up Taneko, caught by the shards there of the Tusker. The Wolves are still in the neighborhoods. They see everything that's happening with Liquid's movements. Okay, he's going to try and D-Ward the other D-Ward, but he didn't realize the other Sentry Ward was planted a little bit further north. So the Ancients will still be able to spawn up here from Team Liquid. Maybe he can bloody block it with the Wolves. They really need to limit this Fens farm because Lycan was really hampered by that Timber Soul in the You're down game. a long way here, Mind Control. There's four heroes from Na'Vi grouping up on this. He Timber Chains up, but Artstar swaps him back in again. They need the stun, they need the control. Reactive armor charges come, but it doesn't matter. Then he commits with the Sonic Wave. Liquid were bringing in reinforcements, but they just don't arrive in time with that much burst damage from Navi and they had a real hard time pushing out the lanes. This game Liquid are up against a very similar sort of thing. They have Lycan which can split push out lanes, the Nathan's Prophet, 
that can split for Chunlings, and they need to be able to get to the point where they can 5 on 5. I believe their 5 on 5 is way stronger than Nazis at this point, especially with the Aegis on Sven. Who do you want to go on here? R style swapping out. My control is actually in the top river as well. So they're going to lose one, but the Rust of Nature bounces through. Lying it down quickly. Jirax with a snowball, protected for a bit, but the Shakurantos bouncing their way out. And now Farda, Exism is on the field. R style wants to run away from this one. He's got a stun. He can hold Farda in position, but Matoman catching Snake on the back lines. They're able to just mop up Nami underneath the tier 2 tower. But there's still a 3 for 2 trade off. You got a good pick up in the top river. Snakeo has a small little opportunity here. You'll see Matumba just walking over the river and like it. Yeah, he's like, okay, he's going to cross the river. You come into our territory. Arsile swapping his teammate in so he can actually get close enough for the swap. The Yule Set, however, now has arrived. Jirax in close and be careful of my control. He's got a big spin with the chain out. They're doing terrible damage to Na'Vi at the moment. Even the Raw is keeping the bounty hunter out of this play. Maybe Na'Vi's actually, yeah, he will go down. He'll give the gem over and Na'Vi lose four. A triple kill for Fada. Mind control with a perfect spin and Vada having all the time in the world after that Yule Scepter went off. Just let the Exorcism do its work. The question is, what do they now do with the Egg of the Immortal? Try and look for teamfights. The Navi should try and dodge and split push. I don't know how Lycan's going to get involved in these fights. Some, at some point he's going to need... A this lot of one way. Koro finds the Dira. Dira walking into his hands with an Necro Bork. He can't actually have enough mana to get the ultimate off. So you can say goodbye to the like, and he bought up his Assault Kuros recipe. Plus the chainmail before death, so there's no money on the Lycan for a buyback. This is a 52 second window. He should be okay because of the pressure being applied through top lane. But Liquid may not care. They're coming in for that tier 3 tower, there's no fortification available from Na'Vi, and there is available from Liquid, and with Exorcism not being able to use for Roshan, Liquid are just going to melt through this mid racks. Yeah, there's God Strain, there's Inner Beast, there's Exorcism, how do you compete with this split foot? They're coming back down on the top. They're coming back to defend the top lane as well. General, he's going to get caught out, so he'll die up there. Meanwhile, Father and Matomaman, they do all the work on the bottom. The thumb from Arsenal, Matomaman will return it with his own Storm Bolt. You've taken out two melee sets of racks. Now, can they get out? This one scot free. Swaps available from Arstar with that level two, but he's just not in range. The ball from the Beastmaster slowing him up so he cannot reach Farda. And then Farda turns for the double silence. Have they got any kind of stun? Any kind of disable? No, they don't. The two people he silenced are the two people with the stuns. Outplayed by Farda. Now he has Blink and Arcane in mind control with a sight. Arstar's moving up. That Hawk. Koro gets a glimpse of Snaker. Snaker quickly blinks up, and now they actually find the Timbersaw. You can track him up. Prophet, he's starting his TP over as well. So they think about going a mind control, but that new side of the vice going to go to work. Not to mention the wall from Koro catching down the back line. Then he's gone. They lost the Queen of Pain. They lost their magical burst damage. There's no way they can kill mind control. And with the rest of the heroes coming over from Liquid, Mataman looking to cleave through the bounty on the main end of one spree, but it's just the buyback. They just had the money. They just had the, the manpower. Team Liquid will just keep walking all over Na'Vi. Catching now inside the river, spin it around, drop him down, Diddy Rara is gone, and the last player being chased is Matumaman versus Arsal up on the top lane. Where's that armor toggle? There's still the Aegis the Immortal, but Arsal's got no chance. Five hero wipe in favor of Team Liquid. You did buy back once, and you did lose that Beastmaster, but still, now you go for the mid lane, and it looks like they can just go for, well, they can't go for the top lane because the tier two tower's still there, so they just go for the GG. Isolate art style, he's hexed up, Goro's on top of him. This could be it for Na'Vi. They're losing too many players. Snaker can come back into the fight. But the rest of Liquid are on their way. The double buyback from Dendi as well as Snaker. But the tier four towers are under siege. Dendi does have Sonic Wave up, but he doesn't have his BKB for the 15 seconds. He doesn't really even have an opening. This game quickly spiraled out of control. Navi, no solution to the mass team fight coming out from Liquid. Uh, they are really almost ending this game. Eight seconds until the Lycan is alive. Ten over on the Prophet. If they lose any more here, it's just like that. There it is. Quick picks and GG. Navi are eliminated and Team Liquid will advance themselves through into the next round where they get to battle up against Fnatic. Still a pretty good run from Navi. Liquid showing why they're many people's team picks for top one in this tournament. Yeah, they're, they are such an amazing team. Such, such solid 
play as well. Navi yep. tried to throw him off a little bit with that Lycan first pickup. You could definitely see the strength of their push, but it never really happened. But win or lose, this crowd still gets a lot of respect to Navi. Liquid still with a very shaky early game, I would say. Beastmaster struggled a lot, gave away a few picks, Fada especially, but they really pulled through in that five-man team fight. Few teams can match them in that aspect.